Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for being here. Uh, I guess I want to begin with an apology. When I stood here last week, I had no idea how bad things were. I was completely ignorant of the scope and size and depth of the devastation that that storm wrought on our neighbors to the west of us. So I just want to apologize to you for that. Am I not? Is the mic on? Can you give me any more, any more juice, Lori? So you're gonna make me apologize again, aren't you, Carol? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't know how bad the storm was and how, how much suffering our state was facing when we were sitting in church last week. Not that we shouldn't have been here. This, this too is important. But I just was completely ignorant when I came to church last Sunday of how bad it really was, and I'm sorry. Um, this morning's worship, there's a couple things I want to do different. Um, the sermon is not going to be typical. Um, for you, most importantly, at the end, uh, when we do the last hymn, if you feel led, and I would invite you to, if you want to come up to the front and pray, I would invite you to come on up. If you would like me to pray for you or with you, um, I'll stand over by the baptismal font and we can pray over there. Yes, ma'am. So this is Yep. So most of you probably didn't hear what Hope just said or some of you probably didn't. This is what I want to do with sermon time today, okay? I want I want everybody to share what's on your heart. We're going to this is going to be more of a dialogue or a discussion. Share what's on your heart, what you know about, things that we need to pray for. And then we're going to talk about things that we have done, that we are doing, and that we can do. Okay? Um, we don't have to solve it all this morning, but I, but I want us to talk about some of that. Wendy and Tony Crump have been, um, they are our disaster response coordinators for, for our congregation. And we have been working all week with um, the Carolinas Mission Region disaster response people and the National Disaster Response Coordinator who is now in Statesville working to help coordinate all of our efforts and she's working with the other agencies, so. Um, yeah, so uh, the rest of the service will be as typical. Um, so I have a couple of announcements I wanna get to before we do birthdays and anniversaries. And it's appropriate to celebrate those, okay? This is a sad time for our state, but we are to Mourn with those who grieve, and we are to celebrate with those who have cause to celebrate. We can do both, okay? Um, there's a correction here. Is Susan here? S Susan's not here. All right. So we had asked for towel donations for, str for Strong Life. Strong Life had enough. Um, so we then took the towels that we, that we donated as a church family to Safe Harbor and to Cooperative Christian Ministries. So they did go to a good place. Um, but Strong Life had what they needed, so they wanted to share. Um, as far as if you want to donate things to the storm, if you have things that you want to uh, bring in for us to get to storm victims, right now the collection point for our church is in the rock class. Is that what we decided? Yes, Tony, I'm looking at you. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, I'm sure that will morph and change as we go. But for this week, we'll call it the rock class and we'll see where it goes, okay? 
Um, I do have a piece of sad news. I didn't get it in time to put in the phone tree. I'm sorry, but Pastor Bloom has passed away. Um, those of you who knew Pastor Harvey Bloom, I didn't know him very well. I only met him once or twice. Um, I think he's been a part of the New Jerusalem Church family for a while. A couple weeks ago, we prayed for him. I think he, I think he came down with pneumonia, um, but he finally did pass away. I believe it was on Wednesday. So please keep his wife, Suzanne, and their family in your prayers. Okay, let's see. Next week is Women's Thank Offering Service. We have a special preacher next week. Yeah. You good, Veda? Awesome. Let's talk a little bit, okay? All right. Right on. Veda asked me a couple months ago if she could preach. So the women requested her to preach next week. So this is going to be good. What? You hear that? You, you, your first one is free. <laughs> I have a few pages to add for you then. So, All right. Um, I will say this now. Um, we can talk about it later, but um, I want to thank Gene Miller and Bob Krogman. They took what we had this week um, to the distribution point in Wilkesboro, um, which as you can see in the bulletin was 35 flood buckets that were built already. Uh, the quilters, holy cow, 134 quilts. Thank you, quilters. My gosh, yeah. I, I heard some other numbers this week in our statewide Zoom meeting. No, nobody, nobody came close to that. So that's an amazing, amazing contribution. Um, oh, Ivy helped too. Yeah, sorry, I, sorry, Ivy. Yeah, I, my apologies. Yes, Ivy went along. I told him his job was to keep the two of them out of trouble. I think he, I think he did okay because they made it back and nobody went. Oh, no, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, who here has a wedding anniversary in the month of October? All right. The Eckerts. How many? How many, Eric? Sixteen. Sixteen. Congratulations. Ha who are we pointing at? Oh, and uh, Kristen and Naaman. How many for y'all? Eighteen. Oh, you were married here at Miller's. Okay, sorry. Picked the wrong week to give up coffee. How many for y'all? 46. 46. Outstanding. Crystal? Crystal? 42. 42. Congratulations, y'all. That's awesome. Excellent. Excellent. All right. October birthday, kids. Tony, when's yours? Yesterday? 26th. Oh, 22nd. Who's the fourth? All right. John and Gloria, both? Excellent. I know Tim Holler's birthday is this month, too. Graylin, when's your birthday, dude? 15th, excellent. Uh, Sandy? 22nd. Jennifer? 24th. Olivia, when's yours? The Halloween baby, excellent, excellent. Robin, when's yours? The first, happy belated. Who else, anybody else? Hmm? Doug, when's your birthday? When's your birthday? 24th. Excellent. Excellent. Wayne, would you lead us, please? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, brothers and sisters. Happy birthday to you. Excellent. All right. I want to I wanna highlight... Just a couple more people and then we'll get started. Bob and Sue Hillier, I'm glad you're here. I know you got your house and property got hit pretty hard, so very good to see you. Glad you're here. Are you okay? Okay. David and Iris are here. Yay. Welcome back. How's, how's the back, David? Good, good. Don't overdo it. Iris, how are you? I know you've been shouldering all the weight for a while. Are you okay? Yeah. Is your hip better? Um, he can help me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. 
So you were actually in the mountains when the storm hit, right? Yeah. Yes, we were there for five days. It's hard. Was, is, is, I, I believe that. Well, we'll talk more about that after the gospel this morning. So, all right. Are there any other announcements for the good of the church family this time? Uh, we have, Lydia has circled. Lydia has circled this week, this L- Tuesday. Lydia circled this week, Tuesday. Yeah. What time? 9.30. 9.30 a.m. in the rock class, parlor? Mm-hmm. Rock class. Rock class. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wendy, any other announcements? No, next week. No, that's next week. Yeah. Week from tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for Bible study, I know we had already said we weren't going to meet tomorrow. I'm going to stick to that. So we'll meet the week after council next. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Miss Gloria, how you doing? They say it's shrinking. Thanks be to God. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Please take a quiet moment and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. We begin with the brief order for confession and forgiveness on page 56. Please stand as you are able. <laughs> we are gathered this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please take a quiet moment to reflect on your personal sins as we lay them at the foot of the cross. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn, (coughs) I think it's number 260, is that right? 7683. Oh, 783, with one voice. And uh, where are my confirmation students? This is the hymn I just talked about.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, have with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Generously pardon and give peace to your faithful people, O Lord, that being cleansed from every sin, we may be free and glad to serve. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. All right. Who's here for children's sermon? Harper. Who's that in the... Is that, is that Michael? Come on, Michael. Jansen Greenland. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. You know this song, sing it. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Mason, you know this song. Do you know this song? Here's what you guys look like. Yes, Jesus loves me. Does Jesus love you? Yes. Are you happy about that? Yes. Good. You should be. Okay. Who were the first people that God made? Adam and Eve. Who did he make first? You think Adam? Who thinks Adam? Was Adam made first? All right. What do you think, Paisley? Was Adam made first or was Eve made first? Uh, Adam. Adam? Okay. So what's that mean? That means that Adam was the prototype and Eve was the improved model? Is that what that was? <laughs> what that means is Adam was alone for a while. Right? Do we know how, does the Bible tell us how long Adam was alone? We don't know. Have you ever been alone? You ever been by yourself? No? You ever been alone, Harper? Do you remember what it was like before twin brothers? Do you? What was it like? Better? <laughs> okay. Better. I can appreciate that, Harper. Your brothers are pretty good guys, though. They are. You'll have to take my word for that. You'll realize it later. Uh huh. She does. 
She does. You're right. You're right. So, so have you ever... Okay, so there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Have you ever felt lonely? You've never felt lonely? Oh, man. Have you felt lonely, Paisley? What is feeling lonely like? You don't get to talk to nobody that's around you, right? There's no, there's no, because there's nobody to talk to, yeah. right? Is that a good feeling or a bad feeling? It's not a good feeling, is it? I mean, sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I do like to be by myself for a while. Sometimes I need a little Todd time, okay? But I'd rather be with people. I'd rather be with my family. I'd rather be with my friends, right? You're gonna, Mr. Gary's going to read a, a Bible passage in a minute that says, it is not good for man to be alone. Okay, And when he says man, he means humans. God did not create us to be alone. We need to have, the big fancy word is companionship. right? We need to, we need to be around people who love us and that we can love. We need to be around people that, that we can help and who can help us. We need to be around people that we can talk with, not talk at, talk with. We talk to them and they talk to us and we listen. God created us to be like that. So when we're isolated, which means when we're off by ourselves and it's not our idea to be by ourselves, we are not who God created us to be. We shouldn't be by ourselves. We shouldn't have to be. That's not God's plan for us. And right now, everybody knows, you, you all are, know about this big storm we're talking about, right? Did a lot of damage. And there are people who can't get out of their homes and their yards still. They're still being rescued. They don't have power. They are isolated. They are alone. And so we're trying to find ways to help them right now. And they're not that far from us, just maybe an hour or two to, to the west. So we need to pray for them, okay? But if you see somebody who's alone or lonely, yes, Michael. You saw some, some that were dead and some that were res being rescued? Yeah. There's a lot of that going on right now, and it's very troubling. So here's what I would tell you. We need to pray for all those people, okay? And aside from the storm, when, especially now that you're in school, okay, you might see somebody sitting by themselves like they don't have any friends, Okay? You might, you might be that person sitting by yourself. I would encourage you to find ways to talk to other people. If you see somebody who you think doesn't have a friend, see if you can be their friend because God doesn't want any of us to be alone, okay? Will you help me pray about that? Let's, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much, for giving us all the things that we just don't deserve but you know that we need. Thank you for giving us the gift of friendship and companionship and family and love and that we too would have other people around us. Help us to always be on the watch for those who might be alone and help us to be your voice in their lives that we might show them that they are loved and they don't have to be alone. Um, please help all of us to find ways to respond to this storm and help those who feel so alone and helpless right now. All this we pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you all. Does anybody want a busy bag? John can help. Thank you, Harper.
The first reading is from Genesis, the second chapter. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. In the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Let us now sing responsibly Psalm 128. The second reading is from Hebrews, the second chapter. Therefore we, must pay close, therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drive away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed among to his will, distributed according to his will. For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere. What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you care for him. You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in suggestion to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, 
that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those through fear of death who are subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself had suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Some Pharisees came up and in order to test Jesus, asked him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. Tony and Wendy, you want to come up? Um, Jan, I'm going to send John over to you. Would you hand him your microphone, please? Huh? You're sitting down. Okay. I promise you that every week when I'm proclaiming the gospel that you should hear the good news. So let me just remind you. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. Not you collectively, you individually, you personally. That makes a difference to us. That makes a difference to all of us. We are not just a charitable organization. I spent a lot of time this week proving to an organization that we are a 501c3 tax-exempt organization so that we could receive some donations. That was a good thing. Good things are coming from that. But we are not just a charitable organization. We are the body of Christ. We are united to our Savior in our baptism. That makes a difference. It makes a difference to each one of us and it makes a difference to our congregation, to our denomination, and to all Christians around the world. Jesus Christ died for you. And he rose again later to show that he is more powerful than even death itself. And our eternity is assured. Thanks be to God. See, I can't preach a sermon shorter than 20 minutes. All right. 
It will never be shorter than that, Jane. So enjoy it. It's all downhill from here. All right. Tony and I talked the other day. We kind of thought, like, with everything that's been happening, we needed to talk about this. So uh, for the benefit of those who are sort of watching what? You might talk to your mind. My mic died. Just do, you do you believe in spiritual warfare? So, no, that's not for me. So, um, I really want this to be an exchange, okay? Um, we're just going to take about 20 minutes, and we're going to talk. So, I'm going to tell you what we've been doing. Um, I'm, well, I'm going to let Tony start, because some good things have already happened this week because of the faith of Miller's Lutheran Church, Okay? Good morning, and, and I feel really uh, guilty sitting up here because uh, all, all we have done has, has, has been just to, uh, uh, to help others uh, to know what to do. And this must be pretty good because the ushers actually came in from, from behind, and they never do that. So when they saw me come up here and sit down, I guess they figured it was, this was going to be pretty rich. But... Uh, <laughs> Let, let me first of all uh, say this. The reason that the pastor didn't know last Sunday was because uh, this storm was so widespread and devastating in western North Carolina that there was no cell service, there was no electricity, and the world didn't know. The world didn't know until Monday or Tuesday when uh, a person who I will leave unnamed so we won't drag politics into this, uh, uh, got in touch with Elon Musk who brought uh, internet service, emergency internet service to the region so that we could tell our story and, and get the word out how bad it truly was. And uh, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to temper my remarks because I know there are little children in here. This, this is the most devastating thing probably that's, that's ever happened in our country. And it's going to it's going to become the most uh, the uh, the um, most costly uh, in in terms of money and in terms of human life of any natural disaster that's ever happened. Uh, they continue to find people. It's now become a instead of a rescue mission, it's a uh, it is a recovery mission. Um, Rather than me stand up here and, and tell you who didn't do what they were supposed to do and who wasn't on the ground, let me tell you this. God is on the ground in Western North Carolina. Through you, through the people of, of Miller's Lutheran Church, through the NALC, and through the thousands and thousands and thousands of rescue workers and first responders and power company workers, and, and people who just took time to go up there and try to help. Uh, let me put this into perspective. One fourth of our state has been declared a disaster area. And when I say disaster area, it could be anywhere from uh, a lot of us, most of us probably were without power for some time. There's some places that's not gonna get power for a long time. I saw this morning on the news that 300,000 are still without power in Western North Carolina. So uh, this is a very widespread and devastating thing. Uh, we in, in the greater Hickory area, we're pretty fortunate, I think, because I don't know that uh, anyone has lost their life in, in either Catawba or Caldwell County. But when you get west of here, when you travel to the western part of Caldwell County, where we live in Lenore, past Lenore and Collettsville, there's still places they haven't gotten to yet. I know that the Hickory City Schools have started back to school, but Caldwell County hasn't started back, and I don't know when we will. Uh, the, the university at, at Boone, Appalachian State, they don't know when they're gonna start back to school. Folks, I can't, I can't tell you the, the depth of how bad this is, but the one thing I can tell you is that God is here and God is present. He is on the ground despite what, what you might see on TV. 
There are a lot of faith-based uh, groups like the Samaritan's Purse, like uh, the Baptist Men's Group, like just groups of organizations that have gone to help out. And I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our organization. Uh, our pastor on Tuesday, was it Tuesday, that we had the first, Pastor Todd organized uh, a um, Zoom meeting. For those of you who are not technology savvy like me, a Zoom meeting means that you get a whole lot of people on a TV screen at the same time and we're all uh, talking and sharing thoughts and sharing ideas. And uh, Wendy and I were a part of that Zoom meeting that Pastor organized. Uh, the national director is a lady named Mary, and I'm not good with names, so I can't remember her last name, but Bates, Mary Bates, uh, she was actually in Ohio, and she had already uh, had boots on the ground in, in North Carolina. We had teams uh, going out from churches in, in uh, the southeast uh, to the devastated areas. Some places we didn't, we couldn't get to. Uh, for instance, we uh, we were fortunate enough, and, and I don't know how much you know about it, the NASL, NALC disaster relief, but we have resources similar to, but not to the scope of Samaritan's Purse. For instance, we have a two trailers that are portable showers. Now we don't think a lot about things like that. You know, we don't we, we take for granted that we can go take a warm shower. But uh, as of Tuesday, there were uh, rescue workers who had been there, uh, telephone or, or a power company linemen, uh, rescue workers from here and from across the state who had already been in the mountains, hadn't had a shower in three or four days. And uh, Mary was able to organize through uh, through our efforts, Pastor and I uh, knew some people and that found out where, they, where there was water that they could use potable water to take a shower. And we were able to get one of the shower trailers to Marion, North Carolina, and one to Clyde. And Clyde is in the far western part of North Carolina. One of them came out of Ohio, the other came out of Florida. And uh, a person who's a close friend of mine on the ground there said that that was such a blessing to them because they had plenty of food, plenty of water, uh, plenty of stuff to feed the people, but the people couldn't shower. And, and that meant the world to them. Uh, other groups organized in Wilkesboro and went up to a place called, uh, starts with a C. Creston. Creston, I'm sorry. Creston, North, North Carolina, which is in Ash or Allegheny County, I'm not sure. But there's a community center up in Creston where, uh, which is kind of the hub of that, that community where a group of, uh, a group of Lutherans uh, from our area went up and started cleaning it out so that they could actually set up a shelter there. Uh, we, we did take flood buckets from here, thanks to Gene and Bob. Uh, they, they got those uh, thanks to Wendy and Joan for putting them together and Pastor and, and all the group that came here to load them and the quilts, my goodness, 125 quilts, that's, that's just incredible. But, but let me just tell you, flood buckets are good for some things. They're really not, maybe not helpful now because those folks lost everything. They don't have a home. They don't have a car. They don't have anything to wash, they're clean. So, so what we can do now is, is to help them uh, survive this until, until they can get help from whatever agency and, and we can continue to help. And I will tell you this, the things that, that they need the most right now uh, is first of all our prayers. Uh, they need our prayers and, and secondly they need, uh, they need things that they can use right now. Uh, we went out and bought uh, with a Thrivent uh, gift card, we went and bought $250 worth of diapers the other day. They can't find diapers. They, and, they don't have water, so they need diaper wipes. Uh, they need shovels. They need rakes. They need stuff that they can clean with if they have property left. 
Uh, there have been, since this began, there have been two or three different uh, groups that have set up flights in and out of the affected area and uh, Hickory Airport has become a, uh, a distribution center and a triage center and everything else you can think of. Eight, uh, the, the, uh, the governor has brought in eight Chinook helicopters, that's those big twin rotor things, and uh, we, we live in Hudson, which is apparently in the pathway because we see them coming and going. And when they go, they take food when they and, and supplies. When they come back, they bring people. And I don't know where those people are now. I hope they're being put up in a, in a shelter somewhere here in, in Catawba County, but that's, that's another thing that we need to research and, and a place where we can witness and minister. And as, as one of my friends told me the other day, he said, and he, he is a Christian too, and he told me, he said, we can't minister to those folks until we feed them and get them into a safe place. Then we can start to minister to them. Uh, so that's, that's gonna be some of the ongoing things that we're doing. Almost every person, I stood in the back of the church this morning before, as you came in, almost every person has a story. Almost every one of you knows someone who's been affected. And you probably, probably uh, some more than others, uh, have, have uh, been active in, in doing things for those folks. I will tell you that uh, a lot of folks, and I'm going to turn it over to Wendy in just a second, a lot of you folks have asked us about, uh, about the Thrivent uh, ministry what Thrivent's been able to do. Some of you have already done your Thrivent uh, action teams, and some of you may want to. And uh, Wendy can tell you what we have learned through the Zoom meetings, uh, how, how they're doing that. But uh, I, I, want to, I want to end with this. I have never in my life been prouder to be a member of Luke Miller's Lutheran Church because several folks walked in the door today and just handed me money. Here, use this. Do, do with this what you can. And I can promise you that every penny of that will go into gift cards and, and um, we're, we're not, we're not going to do the flood buckets for right now because they don't need a flood bucket. What they need is food and medicine and clothing and the essentials of life. Um, I, I am so extremely proud of you and proud of uh, the ministry that, that this church does. I'm proud of our pastor. I'm proud of our, our, our congregation, our larger congregation, the NALC, because we, we, we may not get the, uh, the recognition and all the glory that the Baptist men get and the, and the uh, uh, Billy Graham's or, or Franklin Graham's group gets, but I can tell you that we are on the ground and God is on the ground with us, and, and, and he is there uh, to take care of our needs. Uh, I'm going to let Wendy tell you a little bit about how to do the uh, uh, Thrivent uh, uh, cards, action cards. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank everybody for how much you've done already. I know, Teresa, I can name a bunch of people in here who's already applied for the Thrivent cards. Jennifer. Um, Olivia, she had a card that she was going to use and hasn't used it yet, so she gave it to us this week, and we went and got, like he said, a bunch of diapers and feminine products, and the next um, next card we're going to get, we're going to probably try to get rakes or whatever you guys think. We're going to get rakes and shovels and tents and tarps and things like that because they need shelter too. But the funny story is um, some of the things, the buckets that we had gotten um, for like last month, they hadn't got gone because there was, there was things going on and they weren't able to take them. So this month, when all this went on, when we really needed them, everything was still in the Sunday school room. All the, blank, all the quilts which needed to go to these people, all the 35 buckets which needed to go to them, there were masks in there we hadn't used before, there were trash bags, there were um, some health kits, there were things that really needed to go to this mission and it happened. So to me, that's a God wink. It happened. And between 
Todd, Colin back and forth to this pastor for a couple hours, and, and me and my mom were down there. We were trying to get the buckets and stuff outside so that Gene and, and um, Bob could take their time away and come, and, and we helped them load them, and they took them. But Bob was working that day, so he was able to get off. Gene said, we'll be there in 20 minutes. It just all worked together. And to me, that's, that's something God had something to do with. So we do appreciate it. It was going the next day. We didn't have but two days to get this done. So thanks, Rhonda. She was a terrific help. Pastor came over. Everybody was, was helping there. We appreciate that. But as far as the, um, I know Rhonda's put out online a lot of the items and stuff. So, I mean, we can go over them again or if y'all have any questions. But I know she's been putting them out because we've been asking her to keep, keep updated on it. But um, the Thrivent cards, the Teresa knows I talked to her too. She was telling me she had talked to them um, and she'd gotten a card already. It's, she's gotten it now. Um, Jennifer's waiting on getting one. Olivia, I've already spent hers. I'm supposed to get one Monday. If anybody else wants to apply to one that has a Thrivent account, like a like a um, insurance account with Thrivent, they'll give you $250 twice a year. And it does not have to be six months apart. I just applied for one about two weeks, well, probably about a month ago, and that didn't matter at all. You can do it all, all at one time if you want to. You just have to finish a project before they'll start another one. Um, also, yeah, if you're, if you're applying for it, the easiest way that I did it this time, and, and I don't know who else told me that, Jennifer maybe called, or, or maybe it was you. That did it. They called directly to them, and I let them put it online to do it all for me online. Is that what you did, Teresa? She did it all for me. So it was done in a matter of 15 minutes. And she, you have to put on there, um, you have to put on there Hurricane Helene 2024 to get it expedited. But since somebody told me they did it, oh no, it was, it was um, Susan. Susan, you got one. Too? Okay. Wow. Okay. Susan's the one that told me. She let them do it for you. You can go online and do it, but this one time I wanted her to do it so I could get it started faster because um, I had questions about it anyway. But good, you got one. So if anybody else in here wants to apply for that, that's great. You can go out and buy whatever items you want to, bring it to the rock class in here, and it will be seen off because there's trucks going all the time. Different places, different churches is, is where we're taking them to. We're just trying to keep them coming, moving forward. So, does anybody have any questions about that? Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. Did y'all hear that? App State, that's another drop off zone if anybody wants to see anybody there. Um, any other questions? Will you, will you take the break out and take use breaks and shovels and stuff? I'm sorry, what? Use breaks and shovels like if we have an abundance. I think it was mad. Yeah, they, they said. I think they get mad. I would bring great shovels. Anybody has tents they want to donate or tents they want to tarps or anything? They could just have a little shelter because um, they really don't have anything. You know, they have food, uh, non perishable food, um, water. What, you know, just hygiene products. They're talking about feminine hygiene products. Uh, adult depends, uh, baby diapers, and all that we could find. We didn't check shovels, but all that we could find at Sam's in one location, too. So. We also read that they're needing buckets to use the flush of motors. Oh, okay. So that could be a... And if anybody has any extra buckets and they want to bring it, maybe we can get some more donated through Thrivent since they know all this is going on too. So, um. Wendy, uh, my husband's church got a call Friday evening that they wanted to start receiving winter things. They wanted toboggans, they wanted gloves, they wanted coats. They could be slightly used, slightly used, but clean. And uh, because the weather's up in that area we're talking about what? up in the area we're talking about the areas we're talking about okay you might want to repeat that blankets yeah and we'd see 134 
liquids and we were thrilled to have that. Did everybody hear her while ago? Whatever you want. Yeah. When her clothes. They said uh, coats, toboggans, gloves, socks. They said women or men, does it, any of them, as long as they're slightly used, clean. Uh, I packed up for two days. I, I, my husband took two big bags of jackets and stuff we didn't use or hadn't used in years, and they were clean. Okay. We took gloves that we hadn't even used, and I did a bunch of socks because his son uh, sells, son-in-law sells socks. And stuff. They, they said they were really going to need that soon because that cold weather is supposed to come this week. And we've been giving a lot to Strong Life, so, I mean, we can start taking some of our clothes and stuff we have to these areas now, too. We've taken two trailer loads. We've got a third one to go from the fire department. A couple other things they need. Yeah. Benadryl, the line. Oh, that's what he was saying. Very badly. Because the bees will have this time of year anyway. Okay. They've got strep. The other thing, which okay. is a bunch of, they need uh, for chainsaws. Change and all, uh, they need that? Propane, okay. 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 And she said Benadryl too, they were getting stung really bad up there, so we had mentioned that too, and I guess that's okay to buy with the Thrivent cards too. I mean, I don't know, you know. She put necessary, anything necessary for their health and stuff, so. Um, yeah, I think that's good. One other thing that I forgot about and uh, that's that we don't really think about a lot because most of us live in the city, but uh, I kind of grew up on the farm. So uh, the farmers up there have lost everything too. And they're having to either, re you know, move their animals or find feed for them. I have passed several truckloads of hay going to the to the western because all their hay was ruined so if if you're a, a farmer or you have a hay in your barn that you don't need uh i'm sure that they could use that as well um you know just just about anything and you can contact any of us uh again i know all of you have stepped up and a lot of people have done a lot of things individually to to help and that's been a great great thing and again thank you thank you thank you um, I'm going to turn it over to the pastor for the last word if does anyone have any questions anything that that we didn't cover uh, again if you bring anything here to the church and I don't know if you all have a key to get in but if you'll let them know in the office they'll make sure that it gets into the rock room we, we've been putting our stuff in that Sunday school room over here but you said rock room now Okay, so we'll just move our stuff over. Um, just, just pile it in there. We'll, we'll take care of it. So I have a question. Can any, is anyone going up from the NALC that we can actually go with them and help? The short answer is yes. Um, so this has really been, uh, it started out very chaotic. People were just kind of going in and helping and Mary Bates has been doing disaster response for like 27 years. She really knows what she's doing. So she's been trying to pull everything together and coordinate the efforts a little better. We have a, a, a follow-up Zoom meeting this coming Wednesday at noon, and we'll all know a lot more after that. Um, I would say if, well, for instance, if you want to help today, Let's go, you can come with me, we can go to the Hickory Airport. What did she say, Wendy, two? Two o'clock today. Um, she said we can bring like five to 10 people and, and they'll put us to work if you wanna work at the Hickory Airport. So we're doing something locally right now. Um, the NALC efforts are, um, there's things going on at each of the warehouses. One of the one warehouse in Statesville, which is the one we usually go to, or the one in Kings Mountain. Um, there's, there's work going on at both places right now. Um, so if you want to specifically work with the NALC, we'll probably have to go to one of those places. And 
you know, we can take a load of donations and head over there, something. But um, on, on Wednesday, I expect we're going to have a better idea. But here's the thing. This work is not going to be over in two weeks, okay? This is going to be, a, we're talking in terms of more than a year, I'm sure, maybe multiple years. You know, if you haven't met our new secretary, Rhonda, she's a Nor uh, New Orleans girl, okay? And she said to me early on, she said, this is way worse than Hurricane Katrina. And if you remember that disaster, that devastated that most of the southern part of that state for several years. It took a long time before New Orleans could uh, get back to anything called normal. And she quickly acknowledged this is way worse, okay? Um, so we need to not sprint, if you understand what I'm saying. This is a marathon, so we have to pace ourselves. Yes, there's work that needs to be done, but let's not burn out in the first two weeks, okay? Let's prepare for the long haul. Let's chip in where we can. Um, some of what, there's so many mixed stories going on. I would be very skeptical of what you hear in the news or what you see on Facebook. Tony, Tony's got a contact that works for FEMA, right? Here in North Carolina. And FEMA are doing some of the things that they need to do, okay? Uh, I, as Christians, I don't, Luther teaches us that we should put the best possible construction on what our neighbor does. Okay, what that means is we don't automatically assume the worst of, the, of their intent. Okay, this is part of Luther's teaching on bearing false witness. When somebody does something, we are, we are to assume until we know otherwise that their intentions are good. Okay, that's the Christian approach. So, FEMA is doing good things. There are stories to the contrary. Let's not dwell on those, okay? Let's dwell on the good things. And some of the things that FEMA's doing is they're trying to corral people who are, you know, just flying personal helicopters up the mountain to go rescue people. Yes, that needs to be done, but, you know, there's, if you know anything about flight paths, there's a high, probability, high possibility for a massive tragedy on top of the disaster that's already happened. So let's let the authorities keep us within the guidelines and the boundaries so that we don't make things worse, that we are working together and we're making things better, okay? So um, I think as we go through this and as Mary deals with her contacts in FEMA and the other national agencies and the other big charitable organizations, we'll have a better idea of how we can help. I think the best thing that I heard Mary say this week is if you're watching the news, Asheville is getting all the news coverage. And Asheville got devastated. There's no question about that. But you heard Tony talk about Clyde and Creston. Some of these places got to Thursday before they saw their first truck, before they saw their first supplies. Mary is trying to find those places that have been ignored or that the national relief agencies haven't picked up on yet. She's trying to get help where nobody else has helped yet. And I think that's fantastic because our smaller church organization is going to make more of an impact on small communities. You know, we bring in 35 flood buckets to the city of Asheville and they're going to go, thanks, you know, this is, pardon the expression, but it's a drop in the bucket, right? But when we go to a little town of 100 people that hasn't had any relief yet, we can make a big difference there. And so she's, she's trying to find places that haven't been helped yet or that haven't made the national news and nobody's been able to get resources to them yet. And that's the stuff Mary's working on right now. So um, she's doing all kinds of coordination over the weekend. I know she's probably not gonna get a day off for a little while. Um, I know she's working today to, to coordinate these things. So um, I know it's frustrating that I have to tell you, Teresa, hold on a couple more days. <laughs> you know, uh, there are things, yeah. There are things happening locally. Uh, Wendy and John and I tried to go to the airport yesterday afternoon to help, and they were like, eh, well, we got nothing for you. So we went to App State. We went over to that building, and we helped them clean up for the day and get things sorted a little bit. It wasn't much, but they were very thankful that, because uh, most of their volunteer crew left, and there was only like half a dozen left to clean up and organize before they shut down for the night. So there are things we can do, okay? 
And if you think you can't do anything, you can pray. You can pray. Okay? And as Christians, we believe that prayer works and it does make a difference. And we need to, we need to pray a blanket of protection over everybody that's working. Like I, I was stunned when Sheila told us the other day that these workers that are clearing logs and fallen trees are stirring up hornet's nests and they're getting stung. Like, really? They don't need that. It's, work, it's hard enough work as it is, you know. So, yeah, let's go get a couple cases of Benadryl and send it up the mountain, you know. Mary got that word. She's, she's working on that. But they need that too. And we saw that on the list of, of needs and wants that um, the, the App State stuff that we saw was being coordinated by Samaritan's Purse. So that's their list. And I don't remember who said it, but yes, these, these needs are going to change almost daily. All right. So we'll try and keep, I'll try and keep Rhonda a list that's up to date. So if you want to know what's needed, I would, let's say, call the church office, ask what's needed and what's changed. And we'll just, we'll just update it on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Um, John, John, would you share with us what uh, what Jonathan and, and his group's doing? My son and his wife started up Saturday. Uh, and, uh, station airport has started flying in and out supplies up to the mountains and a helicopter. Greg Ripple was one of them. Then, then on the Thank you, John. Uh, I think I think we haven't seen all the bad stuff that we're going to see before this is over yet. Um, I, I heard Mary say something about um, they ran out of body bags. They've requested, yeah, Sheila was just saying they requested 400 more body bags, and I, I don't know that that's going to be enough either. They started with 1,000, I think. It's, it's going to be bad, okay? So um, your prayers are appreciated. Your help is appreciated. Um, and, but here's, here's the other thing I heard yesterday, and I guess I'll, I'll finish with this. I heard somebody say that they had not seen American citizens come together like this since September 12th, 2001. The people were coming together and putting aside their differences and doing what needed to be done and helping and loving their neighbors because they needed help and they needed love. And that's exactly what we are called as Christians to do. And frankly, our church family has already been doing there's more we can do. If you want to do something, find them, find me, call the church office. We will find something for you to do, okay? Um, in the meantime, pray every day. Stay in touch. We will be doing more. And if, if I get something earth shattering that needs to get out to you, I will ask Rhonda to do a phone tree and we'll get it out as quickly as possible. Um, anything else, Tom? Wendy? All right.
if, um, if there's anything that hasn't been said or anything that you want to get off your chest before you leave this building today, stay here afterwards and we can talk and we can pray. All right? Yes, ma'am. I can do that. And then, um, like, I'm not going to just plug in my store, but we have some survival gear, as in tents, water filtration systems, that kind of stuff, sleeping bags. So if anybody wants to help out with that, just connect with me. Um, and we can get that stuff moving. Rebecca came yesterday and picked up a trailer, well, half a trailer of uh, survival gear. Oh, yeah, so um, Pastor Rebecca and I were talking, and I think we made the comment, um, things seminary doesn't prepare you for came to mind, um, but um, you want to talk about hitting the ground running. Um, she and her church have, have really been uh, doing quite a bit also this week. Uh, they're a good bit closer to the uh, Kings Mountain Warehouse. Um, if you've heard me talk about the Cloninger family in her church, have you heard me mention that family? That's the family that um, they have a construction business and they're going to bring some equipment up and um, help us clean up the, the remains of our lake house that we burned down. Um, they've donated 100 bales of hay to, um, to the farmers out in the west part of the state that need feed for their animals. There's, there's a lot of good going on down there. And, um, Believe me when I say Rebecca and Adam dove in head first this week. So um, there's, is that what you were trying to, yeah. So, um, at, yeah, <laughs> she learned a lot from y'all, believe me. Uh, and uh, Tony also told me to remind y'all, um, we checked, uh, I did get news, none of the NALC congregations in North or South Carolina were damaged, the, the church is all intact. Okay, so that means that all of our churches, all we, we have 55 churches in the two states now, all of them are in a position to help and not ask for help. So at this point, we are all within the NALC and the Carolinas Mission Region, we are all contributors to uh, the relief effort. And, um, and I think that's uh, praiseworthy. So thanks be to God for keeping all of our congregations safe. So, um, if you want to talk more, let's, let's stick around after, um, but, uh, certainly thank you all for all of your prayers so far. Sandy. I, I have some instructions on how to, how to get a check made out the best way possible. Um, if you can either wait for me after church or let me send you that information, I can, and I can put it on Facebook later. Um, it's, I can't, I've got so much going on in my brain right now, I can't remember exactly what those instructions were, but I've got it in a, because that question came up yesterday. What's that? It's on the, it's on the insert? Okay, so check that, check that bulletin insert, it should be there. Yeah, all right, so make it out to Miller's Lutheran Church and in the memo line put disaster relief, okay? Yeah, there's a, um, Paul and Jean have a separate account set up to keep those monies separate from our operating fund. So. One thing too, animals like dogs, cats, and things like that are needing food too, so if y'all have fur babies or anything and you just want to donate some dog food or something like that to help these animals too because they've been asking a lot for that on the you know facebook too with some of these humane control societies and stuff too so. All right. the lord be with you let us pray mighty and merciful god 
devastation that we've seen this week is just unlike most of us have ever seen in our lives. And we know that you are at work in the aftermath. We know that you have called us to, um, to assist where we can, to help where we can. Um, thank you for bringing us together that we could, we could make a little bit of a difference in the lives of the people who are suffering and hurting so, so badly right now. We lift all of them up to you, everyone who's lost something or someone in the, in the, uh, in the storm that hit. Um, God, let them feel your presence, your comfort, and your peace. Uh, help all of us to, to show them that they are not forgotten. Help us to find ways to, if we can't contribute monetarily, if we can't contribute physically, then help us to contribute spiritually. Um, please show us how we can how we can make a difference, how we can um, shine a light in the darkness that is just filled with despair right now. Help us to bring hope that ultimately comes from you. I thank you for the, the talents, the time, and the labor that our church family has put in so far. I thank you for their willingness to contribute more. Um, Please guide us, God. Please strengthen us. Give us uh, energy for the long haul. Uh, be with Mary Bates and, and our, our national and state teams that, um, that they would put uh, resources in just the right place at just the right time, um, that we could prevent the loss from being any worse than it already is. Um, help this to be uh, an event that Ultimately, we can, we can show that you do love your people, that you haven't forgotten them, and that people are not abandoned. Please watch over all the workers, the, the pilots and the ground crews, the, um, the people loading and unloading supplies, and the people digging out trees and houses and clearing roads, and just all the, all the hard work that's going into this, God, please... Please offer your protection over them um, and give them strength to do the tasks that still remain. Um, we thank you, God, for the safety that you have shown us. Help us not to take that for granted and help us to use what we have that you have blessed us with that, me, that we may be a blessing to others. Uh, watch over us this day and always. And help us to always be thankful for all that you've given us. We pray this in the name of your Son, who suffered and died for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Faithful God, guide your church in the ways of your kingdom. Renew our faithfulness and deepen our trust in you so that we may lay aside divisions born of selfishness and pride. Strengthen our witness that the world may see in us a reflection of your unity in Christ and the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of grace and beauty, even as autumn trees and forests break forth in colorful praise, declaring your glory and the wonder of your care, we ask that you would clothe your people with mantles of thanksgiving, that our lives may proclaim the majesty of your undying love, revealed in him who is our beautiful Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, all rulers, powers, and dominions are subject to you. Grant that the leaders of nations will govern with wisdom, justice, and equity for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate God, our joys and sorrows are fully known to you. You grieve with us in our pain and sorrow and rejoice in our times of grace-filled joy. Bring healing to those who are suffering from physical illness or injury, the pain of broken relationships, the sor sorrow of shattered hopes, and any kind of loss, especially for everyone on our prayer list, those we name now in our hearts, and those known only to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray to you, Almighty God, in this time of this natural disaster. You are a refuge in our strength, a very present help in time of trouble, do not let us fail in the face of these events. Uphold us with your love and give us the strength we need. Help us in our confusion and guide our actions. Heal the hurt, console the bereaved and afflicted. Protect the innocent and helpless and deliver any of those who are still in peril. For the sake of your great mercy in Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all pastors in the North American Lutheran Church and those who are working to become pastors. Bless Bishop Dan, Pastor Amy, and the entire NALC staff, Dean Steve, Pastor Todd, Pastor Nelson, Pastor Henry, Pastor Rebecca, and all clergy in the Carolinas Mission region. Guide them in their ministry. Strengthen them to do your work and protect them from all evil. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, be with our brothers and sisters whose congregations are discerning the call for a new pastor, especially Mount Calvary, New Covenant, and Grace Lutheran churches. Assure them of your Holy Spirit's presence throughout the call process and guide us to be good neighbors to them during their transition. Bless their interim pastors as they lead them through this season of change. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And I'll stay with you. Please share that peace with your neighbor.
signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life, and so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unerring salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, for all is now ready. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
invite you to stand as you are able. <coughs> the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Almighty Father, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of our Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Um, so again, as we sing this hymn, if you'd like to come up and pray, you can come all the way up to the communion rail or just down front and pray in front of the cross. Um, if you'd like me to pray with you, come meet me over at the baptismal font. Um, if we run out of time, Wayne will fill the... As long as people are coming forward, Wayne will play. And when everybody's done, then we'll proceed with the dismissal. Thank you. 